Yeah. You know why Prince gave me the song Jail? Because he liked what I did. And he's like, I like what you did with them contracts. If you ask Kanye, he will tell you that he connects spiritually to Prince, and they both fought for similar things in the industry, which is why he is exposing what really happened to Prince and what really happens behind closed doors in Hollywood. So there are people who say that Kanye West is just like Prince. Like when L.A. Reid told Access Hollywood, people love Kanye for sure, but he's great, great. I mean, on the level of Prince. But modern day, he's hip hop. He's not the same thing. He doesn't play guitar. He doesn't play piano. He's not that kind of performer. But for hip hop, he is a king. However, a lot of people say that it's insane to compare Kanye and Prince because Prince is so much better than Kanye. But as far as public persona and image, the comparisons are pretty accurate. I personally think that if you took late 70s, 1980s Prince and plugged him into the social media era, he would have been viewed the same way Kanye West is viewed. And it's such things that get celebs in Hollywood mysteriously unalived. And that is exactly what Kanye has been saying happened to Prince. So the narrative that was sold to the public was that Prince died at age 57 after being found unresponsive at his estate in Minnesota. At the time, health officials determined Prince died of an accidental fentanyl overdose after unknowingly taking counterfeit Vicodin laced with a highly potent synthetic opioid. However, there were a lot of questions that people had and still have. His health was actually the first thing that didn't make sense at all. Famously clean living Prince died of a painkiller overdose? Yeah, okay. Um, he was really health conscious. He was a vegan. He didn't have alcohol. I didn't know of him drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked out, you know, so you know, that that also really concerned me. Well, there also were reports that said he was quite unwell in the weeks leading up to his death and that he even OD'd before. Apparently, Prince had been showing serious health problems within the previous weeks, having canceled shows and making an emergency landing while returning home where he got a dose of an anti-opiate. But if that was the case, why wasn't he under the care of a physician after apparently ODing less than a month prior? prior and clearly being in poor health for some time. The fact that Prince was not being treated by a doctor seems to be exceptionally odd as it seems to be likely that to obtain tour dates, there would have had to be an understanding that he would be capable of performing to prevent unexpected cancellations, especially at larger venues. And don't you find it odd that he was found in the same elevator that he called the devil? One thing that, you know, kind of spooked me about it all what? was, um, he has a song called uh, let's go crazy. crazy yeah. 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 And it says, don't let the elevator bring us down. Uh, One time when I was with him privately, he yeah. said, you know what the elevator is, right? No. I said, no, what's the elevator? He said, well, the elevator is the devil. People also wondered why Prince was alone at Paisley Park. Yeah, I know that he was insanely private, but you want to tell me that there were no servants, no security staff, no assistants, nobody? Yeah, that's just weird. Real sus. Obviously, it also doesn't help that there were also some sort of predictions that Prince was going to die. For instance, something that raised eyebrows was his last Instagram post posted shortly before his death that contained a picture of him which said in a since deleted message, just when you thought you were safe dot dot dot. Now I know that Prince used to write some weird stuff sometimes, but that last post had a lot of folks believing that he knew he was in danger and he predicted his death not once, but twice. During his final appearance at a party at Paisley Park, just after his reported treatment and days before his death, Prince reportedly told attendees, wait a few days before you waste any prayers. Very cryptic, Prince. There was also an allegation going around that he put a target on his back by talking about chemtrails something that in his era, Kanye is most likely to say such things on television. You know, when I was a kid, I used to see these trails in the sky all the time. And I said, oh, that's cool. A jet just went over. And then you started to see a whole bunch of them. 
And next thing you know, everybody in your neighborhood was fighting and arguing and you didn't know why. Okay, so for context, for a long time, there have been conversations about the government using the trails left by jets to spread biological agents of population control of some sort. And when Prince talked about the theory on television, he allegedly put a target on his back. It gets even creepier because during an episode of The Simpsons titled Treehouse of Horror, there was a segment in which Homer Simpson offs a number of celebrities, including a purple one, who Homer ended using the singer's own uniquely shaped guitar and it was by order of the government and can we just talk about how when prince was signed to warner bros he really fought for the rights to his own music something that kanye also has been very vocal about when we sign we just we just working for the white labels we ain't signing nobody this ain't independent yeezy's the only 100 owned independent you know, uh, black owned or whatever. And when it comes to Prince, the battle started a very long time ago. The way I looked at it, I owned the work because I paid for it. And I did all the work, I created it, so I felt like it should belong to me. That said, the um, companies felt otherwise. He actually fought Warner Bros to get ownership of his rights and more creative control and struggled to get out of a deal he signed when he was 19 and even famously started appearing with the word slave on his face. In 1999, in a paper mag interview, he even spoke about leaving the company saying, I wanted to buy my masters back from Warner Bros. They said, no way. So I'm going to re-record them, all of them. Now you will have two catalogs with pretty much exactly the same music, except mine will be better. And you can either give your money to WB, the big company, or to NPG, you choose. And he also opened up about how the labels controlled him and many other artists in other interviews. And as long as you're signed to a contract, you're gonna take a minority share of the winnings. A select few of us will do well, the majority will not. Eventually, he left Warner Bros, but he rejoined them in 2014 with ownership of his old masters, but with the label holding global licensing rights. Then came Kanye in 2020, posting pages of his UMG deal on Twitter and saying it represented slavery. He was like, when you sign a music deal, you sign away your rights. Without the masters, you can't do anything with your own music. Someone else controls where it's played and when it's played. Artists have nothing except the fame, touring, and merch. And in another tweet, he wrote, we've gotten comfortable with not having what we deserve. They allow us to have a little money Money from touring, get some gold chains, some alcohol, some girls, and fake numbers that feed our egos, but we don't own our masters. Kanye West also went on another one of his rants in 2022 about how celebrities in Hollywood just disappear. You know, out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. Feels like it might be a lot of that in order to control, traumatize. They want to monetize and traumatize. And he even went ahead and name dropped the people he believes are controlled. They can't control me. You get what I'm saying? They can control Shaq. They can control Charles Barkley. They can control LeBron James. They can control Jay-Z and Beyonce. No, not you, man. But they can't control me. Not you see, you. it ain't no name I won't name. Exactly. It's up. So based on what Kanye says and what Prince was preaching, I wouldn't blame anyone for believing that higher powers were involved in getting rid of Prince. And based on other conspiracy theories, it goes even higher than record labels and companies, and I'm talking Illuminati higher. Again, not surprising considering Prince's death has also been linked to the Illuminati before. But you know what? Let me know what you think about what really happened to Prince and whether you find him and Kanye comparable in the comment section below.